Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here to talk about RFID. RFID is an acronym for Radio Frequency Identification and is part of a group of technologies, along with things like barcodes, called AIDC, or Automatic Identification and Data Capture. RFID is used for things like ID badging and controlling access to restricted areas, for asset tracking and inventory management, race timing, pet identification, even counterfeit prevention in the pharmaceutical industry. RFID has been with us in one form or another since the mid-1940s, with things like theremin's listening device, as well as identification friend or foe transponders used in aircrafts during World War II. Well, now, 75 years later, we have a whole host of options when it comes to RFID. RFID is basically broken up into three components. There's the tag, the reader, and the computer or controller that does all the brain work. As far as the tags go, we've got three options. There are active tags, and those are tags that have their own power source, usually a battery, and can continually transmit their signal. You'll find those in things like your Easy Pass or Express Toll, the things you stick in your car and then they just read your toll as you're going down the highway. There are passive tags, like these, and these have no power source. Rather, they rely on the RF energy transmitted from the reader to send their signal. And the third type is semi-passive. Now, like passive tags, they require the energy from the reader to send their signal. However, they do have a battery like the active tags. But in the case of semi-passive tags, that battery is usually only used to power a sensor and the associated circuitry. As far as readers go, they generally fall into three ranges. There's low frequency, high frequency, and ultra high frequency. Now, while all these possibilities are great and allow you to really customize your project to exactly how you need it, for those just starting out in RFID, they can lead to some unintended issues. Uh, for example, if you were to get our RFID Quick Kit, put it all together, build a great project that you love, you want to get more tags for it, but you want small ones, if you were to go with the MyFair Classic Laundry Tag, because they're small, they're not going to be compatible with this, because those are 13.56 megahertz tags, and this is a 125 kilohertz reader. So that's something to be aware of. Additionally, if you need tags read at a greater distance, you're going to probably want to go with our simultaneous RFID reader, because with the proper antenna, that can read tags at up to four and a half meters away. Of course, like with all RFID projects, you need to make sure you've got the correct tags. And in that case, I believe they're the EPC Global Gen 2 tags. So to give you a little RFID demo in a real world scenario, I thought I would open up a bit to you about myself and my family. Now, since we've been spending a lot more time together at home, I've learned something. We have a terrible problem with M&M consumption. I mean, we're like two purchases away from shareholders sending us thank you notes. So my wife asked if there was something I could do to help limit our M&M intake. This seemed like a perfect RFID project for me. So I picked up an old coin-operated vending machine and I went to work. Now, I'm not going to go into the build of this. Just know that it's very similar to the LED gumball machine that Nate made. So if you want to take a look at the build, you can find that on our website. Now, because this is an RFID project, I did have to make a little bit of a modification. Now, the face plate is about two millimeter thick metal. And even if I removed all this stuff from the back of it, which is a really cool mechanism, I still couldn't read the RFID tag through the metal. So I had to 3D print a plastic plate for it. But other than that, it's all good. So inside the machine, I've got the Redboard Quick, I've got the Quick RFID reader, and the Quick Real-Time Clock module. That keeps an eye on what day it is and limits us to two servings per day. Now everybody in the family gets an RFID card. The dad card, the mom card, the daughter card, and the son card. So say I, as the dad, want some M&Ms. Got my bowl there. I take my dad card and I swipe it. And I get a delicious serving of M&Ms. Suppose I want a second serving. Well, I hit it again. I get the green indicator light telling me, yes, you may have delicious M&Ms. Open it up, get my M&Ms, and be on my way. Now, suppose I want a third serving. Well, too bad. I get the lights of shame, and I don't get M&Ms until the next day. Now, in case things start to get ugly and I sense a mutiny coming, I also created an in case of emergency card. 
which completely bypasses the daily limit. Just don't tell my kids that. So there you go. That should give you a pretty basic overview of RFID technology. Now, if you're new to RFID and want to get started, I'd recommend taking a look at our tutorials and using those and perhaps the RFID quick kit as a jumping off point and see what you can come up with. Until then, have a great day and happy hacking. Or automatic information, no, automatic identification, dang it. RFID is used for things like badging ID, ID badging. I get a green light. <laughs> to start yourself. Not start yourself, that's dumb. You don't start yourself as a starting point, as a jumping off point. This is tough without you here, Cassie. I guess I should wait till they all serve and then open the thing up. <laughs> Oops. <laughs>